Okay, so now we're going to show you how to modify the label text itself using the code rather than the attributes window. So we're going to call the text field off the label and assign it a new value. So we'll go LBL label dot text and then we can assign it a new value. But be careful, we can only pass in strings. So we won't see that. Well, we will see that the text will actually not change until the app is run. And I'm going to show you how to run it. It's just a simple matter of pressing the list play button in the top left corner. OK, but if we assign text as an attribute directly, then it will appear as soon as the app is run until we modify it to contain something else, at which point the code will basically dictate that the label will contain a different kind of text. Okay, so now we've initialized an, a UI label. We've called it LBL label and we've initialized it in this line here. So now we can use this label by calling its name dot something in the text and we can modify a bunch of fields. So the one we'll be looking at in this video will be the text fields. So we could either do that in one of two places. We could either do that in the view did load or we can create a function and call the function the view did load. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and create this function, which I'm going to call modify, modify label text. And it's going to have no parameters or return value. And I'm just going to call it in the onCreate method here. So modify label text. And this way I can put whatever code I want. I can put, you know, many, many lines of code in this label text fu uh, function. And that way I can keep it all out of the view did load. Because by pushing it in here and then calling it, we're doing the same thing as putting it all in the view did load without clustering up that particular function. And because we'll generally be calling a lot of functions in the view did load, we'd rather not cluster it up as much as possible. Okay, so I'm going to put all of the text modifications inside of this function here. And the way we call any of the text is by first calling the name, so LBL label, and then dot, and then text. So notice how there are all of these kind of drop down items. So we can do text color, alignment, input mode, draw text, attributed text, and that's just under the text field. Like look how many there are if we just do dot whatever. So there are lots of different options. We're just going to stick with a text one. Okay, so there are a couple things we can do. We can say equals something and then give it some kind of a string value to modify the text. Or we can call dot and then there are even more functions that can be called. We're going to take a look at modifying the text first and then we're going to take a look at some of the other functions that we can call on the text. So the way we assign text is by calling the text for the label and giving it some kind of a string. So if we want to give it some kind of a string like Mammoth Interactive, it will now contain that string once the code is run. So notice how although I'm assigning it here, it's not changing the value up here. Okay. The reason being that when we created this label, we assigned the text to contain hello. Okay. So that means that when this app loads, unless otherwise specified in the code, this is the text that it's going to contain. We won't actually see the change in text uh, that we've assigned down here until the app runs. Once it runs, then we'll see that, that kind of change. Okay, So that's the difference between assigning the attributes here using this kind of attribute inspector and the difference between, yeah, the difference between that and assigning it in the code itself is that you won't actually see the changes if you assign it in the code until the code is run and the certain conditions are met. Okay, so there are three ways we can do this. We can either pass it a string directly or we can create a variable or constant. Let's call this mammoth and we'll feed it in the value of mammoth interactive. And we can pass that in. And that's fine to do as well. Or we can even pass in a number or something converted to a string. So 
The way we do that, if you recall from the variables tutorial, is by doing this. And yet, they were getting this warning because Mammoth isn't used, but that's not a problem. I just ignore that if I were you. Okay, so we've seen three ways that we can modify the text. Again, pass it in a uh, string directly. We can pass it in a variable that's a string, or we can pass it in something converted to a string. Okay, so if you guys haven't got it by now, it needs to be a string. So this, these label texts have to be strings. Okay, we can't pass if we try to pass it in a number. Then see the error we get. We can't assign type int to type string. So it expects the input to be a string. So whatever we feed it in, whatever we want the text to be, it expects it to be a string. Okay. So remember how I talked about when we talked about variables, how I said strings are useful for messages and text in the code. Well, this is exactly why. Okay. So I'm just going to leave this as mammoth for now. And so hopefully when this app runs, it will change a value to Mammoth Interactive. And you know what? Let's go ahead and run it and see that in action. Okay, so if we click the Run button up here, it compiles and builds a code. And we see Build Succeeded popped up there. And we'll just wait for the, emul or the simulator to run. can be a little slow if it's starting up for the first time. And is it going to work? I'm not too sure. It's the iPhone SE. There we go. So we get Mammoth Interactive appearing up here. And that's exactly what we should hope because although we assign it to contain the hello text, we change the text in the code here to be Mammoth Interactive as soon as the app ran. If we were to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and stop it and just comment out this line of code in this one. And so let's run it now and see what value it contains. What do we think it should contain? So it, we no longer have this assignment telling the label to contain this Mammoth Interactive text. And as you can see, it contains a text hello. And again, that's because we assigned the text attribute to contain, or the label text to contain hello and we haven't reassigned it in the code. But we want to show you how to reassign it in the code, so I'm just going to keep it as that. I'm just going to close this window up here because I no longer need it, and I kind of want the space. Okay, so that's how to modify the text itself. Okay, so again, the key points to take away are going to be that the you have to feed it in a string, so you can feed it in either a string directly, or you can feed it in a string variable, or something converted to a string, just as long as it is a string. And this is how you modify it. Now, if we want to pull the text that's already there, we can do that too. So we know that this contains some kind of text, and once this code runs, we know that's going to contain Mammoth Interactive. So let's say we want to pull the text from it, okay? So the way we do that is we can assign a constant or a variable. Let's just say this is text. And this equals the LBL label dot dot text. And yeah, so this is how we do it. We are ba and yeah, we get the same error that it's not being used. That's fine. We are basically just saying that the LBL label.text, whatever that's currently equal to, so in this case it should be equal to Mammoth Interactive, will be assigned to this variable text. And then we can use that variable to do whatever we want with. So this is basically just creating a variable and assigning it to contain the value of the current text. All right, so we can then take this variable, modify it, we can add stuff to it, take stuff away from it, but it won't change the text, or the label text, until we reassign it up here, okay? We'll get more into what to do with this in the next part. Just know that it can be done. We can pull the value, the current text that's in the label. And this is how you assign the label text. Okay, so in this part of the tutorial, we showed you how to modify label texts. So we called the LBL label.text, so this was our label name, and we called the text field off it. And you can just change the value by saying equals and then some string value. So we saw that we can pass in a string directly, or we can pass in a variable that's a string, or something converted to a string, such as a number. Okay, just as long as it's a string, we're okay. 
So it's also important, it's an important skill to learn as most apps require some kind of reassigning of label texts, okay? So remember, it's the label name, dot text, and then we can assign it to contain whatever we want as long as it's a string.